Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA and Elite Total Body Care. So today we are doing a somewhat different style to my client here. Um, you guys saw her video last week and she came in <laughs> to get another hairstyle. So I wanted to showcase it for you guys. Um, we are going to be cutting her hair down a little bit today because we're going to be doing some comb waves. Now in her crown area, as you guys, as you guys know, she has some scarring alopecia. So that area definitely is going to be um, covered to the best of our ability. Now for the sides and the back, when it comes on to comb waves, um, the length of the hair does actually matter. So I tell people all the time, if you're trying to keep your hair extremely long and get comb waves, that's really not comb waves. They will last maybe the whole of a, maybe an hour or two, and then it'll start to drop. With comb waves, it's really more designed for pixie cuts or shortcuts and the hair does need to be um, fairly freshly relaxed. It doesn't have to be relaxed the same day, but it does need to be within the last week or two weeks of having um, this style. I've seen people do it without the relaxer and it ends up you know, swelling a little more than you'd like. Now, of course, for me to do the comb waves, I'm using our Elite Silk Wrap Foam. Um, I start by applying it side by side. So. When you apply the wrap foam for comb waves, you really wanna make sure that you start the waves at that very moment um, because the hair is really, really pliable and the hair doesn't start absorbing um, the product itself or the product does not begin to dissipate. So at this point, the hair is extremely pliable, okay? Now the foam wrap does not change the texture of the hair. When I say pliable, I'm just saying movable in respect to what we're trying to do. Um, for the wave part of it now, there is no right or wrong way to do the waves. You really just start making little C shapes and you know you pick your comb up as you make each shape. Where people go wrong with this is they try to run the comb through the entirety of that side of the head all at one time and keep the comb on the head when that is not how it's done. If you guys notice, as I make the wave, I lift the comb up and then I start the next wave. So that's why I said this style is very freehand. There's no right or wrong way in respect to how your waves are laid. You place them wherever you like. They don't have to connect, okay? So the waves do not have to connect. Now in her area where I know she has some scarring alopecia, I did of course direct my waves in that area because I wanted to take emphasis away from the eye of the fact that she has scarring alopecia and bring the emphasis to the waves so it kind of distracts the eye. I love the wave styles but it is not the simplest style to maintain so I always like to tell people that this style is a style that you get done for a special occasion of some sort. Um, you want it done fresh for that day. You want to look nice and jazzy for that day. But it's not something that I would recommend getting all the time. I just feel like it is one of the most complicated styles to keep. Because the moment you go to bed and your scarf moves or your head moves in the wrong way, so does the wave. So that's just my honest opinion. Some people will agree, some won't. Now you guys know she also has some scarring alopecia in her hairline. So what I'm doing is directing my waves in um, a direction that will cover that area and then basically creating a hairline with her hair, okay? So the waves don't have to match. They can be sisters. They do not have to be twins, okay? So keep that in mind whenever you're doing a style like this. So once you're finished with the wave, now is where I start my protection of her area where she has the scarring alopecia. I will say this 1300 times until everyone understands this part of the concept. Even though the area is scarred, that does not give me the right or even a thought to say that I would not protect that area. I hate to see stylists act as though it doesn't matter just because it's scarred. Yes, scarring means that that area will not grow back, but there could also still be follicles in that area, and it is not our decision whether the hair grows back or not. So I like to make sure that I do my due diligence and I take my proper steps in preparing that area thoroughly, covering that area, protecting that area before I actually lay any form of adhesive on that area. Okay, so she has three levels of protection in that area right now. And then I can go ahead, um, I'm going to start applying my tracks. Now I am using glue. Someone in one of my previous videos um, made a comment that said, okay, so you're putting glue in an area where it's already damaged, that's causing more damage. Clearly people do not listen. 
people listen to rebut rather than listen to understand. If I am telling you that I have put three levels of protection in that area, I'm not saying it for my health. I'm saying it as a fact. I pride myself on ensuring that I literally do my absolute best to prepare or create multiple levels of protection. So right now she has three levels of protection. So there is no way for the glue to penetrate even one layer of protection. And even if it was to penetrate one, it has two other layers, including a protective paper before it would even get to the scalp level, okay? So when it comes on to my particular alopecia clients, they know that I do my due diligence, I cover their areas, I protect their areas, and I give them a bomb style at the same time. So, you know, if you don't understand the concept, just ask, just ask, or really pay attention to what I'm saying, the voice in the air, and it will really show you exactly what I'm doing, okay? So what I'm doing is a horseshoe shape with the extension. The reason why I'm doing a horseshoe shape is because I want to create a illusion of coverage on all sides of the crown, okay? So if I did a straight line, it's going to leave um, a hollow space on either side of where the extensions are. So the reason why I'm doing a horseshoe is because I wanna create coverage through the entirety of the crown and I want to fill out the entire area where she has the scarring alopecia. As you guys can tell, it is a large area. So I wanna make sure that on all sides, she has coverage, okay? And we're doing a short style. So you wanna make sure that you um, apply or install the extensions enough so that when you go to do the short style, it blends really, really well. If it's too thin, it's not gonna blend. If it's too thick, it's gonna look like a wig. So you kinda have to just understand this concept of how it works when it comes onto extensions and blending it with the client's hair. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just using a little bit of notching to go through and blend the extension hair with her hair so the job is never done. <laughs> but I am going through and just notching and blending this part of the process, you know, every stylist has their own preference. Some like to use the razor, some like to use the shears. It doesn't matter. It's just whichever preference that stylist has. And as I said, when it comes on to cutting, especially with alopecia clients, there's really no blueprint. You're working with what your client has and you're creating a plan as you go. Okay. So for me, I create as I go. I'll have a vision in my mind and my goal is to execute that vision. But sometimes as I go along, it might not work. So I have to kind of revamp in the middle of what I'm doing and figure out how to make it work without hindering anything that's going on with my client at that time. So the cutting part is really just to make sure that her hair is blended with the extensions because it is a short style. So you don't want to walk around looking like you have on a toupee. That's really the concept. And you also want to make sure that it blends with her hair. It looks seamless as hair always does. Hair does not have it's, hair is not really made for blunt lines all over, okay? So hair has short pieces, long pieces, skinny pieces, thick pieces, and that's exactly how you want your crown to look whenever you're trying to blend extensions with your hair. So it's just a little thing that I've always enjoyed. Not every stylist understands this concept, and that's another reason why I say for certain things, you go to certain stylists. For certain sicknesses, you go to certain doctors. So, you know, you use that same concept. All right, so I applied a little bit of Frizz Tamer and Shine Serum. I did also put some Elite Mask It in the areas where um, it was a little more hollow in between her hair. Rather than applying more extensions where it was already really, really fine in texture, I went ahead and just used the Elite Mask It to cover that area. Some good news is we are bringing back the Elite Mask It in the colors of um, charcoal and dark brown. Um, I've, it's been something that you guys have been asking for for so long uh, and I just said you know what I'm gonna bring it back but I'm gonna make it even better than what we had before so the elite mask it hair fibers will be back fairly soon and you'll be able to get those as well um, I know you guys want to know what date they're coming back but they're not coming back right away so you guys just give us some time it takes us a couple weeks to even get it in after formulation, after packaging, after all of that. The formulation is complete, but we're working on the packaging now. So it'll be a little bit. Now what I'm doing in the crown area, um, because I, I normally do it in like a spiky style, I'm doing it in some curls. 
So I'm just using my 3 tenths of an inch iron and just creating some curls in that area. Now if you guys notice, I'm bringing the curls towards the front of the face. And then at some point you guys will see me go in different directions. That is how this style really works. It's not a one direction. You want to just fill it in and you just, you're placing your curls as you go. Okay. So you're placing everything as you go, right? I also was spraying a little bit of holding spray as I was doing this. Extension hair is extremely soft when you first start using it. Um, over time is when it creates or gets a little bit more texture, but extension hair is extremely short. I mean, extremely um, soft, right? So I use a little bit of spritz just to make it work. Um, you know, it's everybody's choice. Now the spritz that I'm using is not making it hard. It's not a hard hold. It's a very soft hold. It's a very, very soft hold, okay? And then for the front area, I did it a little more loose where it wasn't really a curl, but more a flip because I did want to um, incorporate her hair, number one. And number two, she likes the flip a little bit more than the curl. And then if I curled it in the face, it would be a little bit too short for her liking. So I started to do a flip as I got to the front. Now, I'm going to stop talking for a little while. I'll let you guys just kind of see the style unfold, and then we'll come back at the end and finish up. the end of this video please don't forget to comment and tell me what you guys thought about this style on her also if you're new to my youtube go ahead and hit that subscribe button and thumbs up this video thanks for watching